Hello and welcome to All Knit If I Want To. I'm Andrea Mowry of Dre Renee Knits and this is a little weekly podcast where I answer some of your questions and usually show a little bit of what's going on in my crafty little corner of the world. I should have taken a drink of water before I started this, but I didn't. So excuse me. Um, all right, let's get started. Today I am wearing the Traveler. This is the crew neck version. And it's knit up in Ritual Dyes Sprite. And then this is my Rad Plaid Cowl, which is knit up in Hinterland, Lobby Anime, and some of my hand spun. Um, so let's look at your questions. All right. So the first question is wait i'm wondering if you have any tips suggestions for pregnancy and or postpartum knits what to knit on that i will be able to wear during this time should i stick with cardigans and shawls or can i try a pullover with a large intended positive ease like a weekender i'd love to hear any thoughts you have about crafting during this time so for me, my kids are nine and seven, and I did do some sweater knitting around the time I was having my kids, but I was mostly in a shawl phase, and I found that worked beautifully <laughs> with the young baby stage. Um, all of us are different. Our bodies are gonna change in different ways and to a different extent, but also what happens after you have the baby is gonna vary for everyone. For me, I breastfed my babies, which meant all my clothes had to be boob accessible. And it, I don't think until you're in it, you realize how much that affects your wardrobe choices. I remember my favorite part of when my kids did stop nursing was that I got to wear whatever I wanted again. Um, so that's also a consideration outside of how your body's changing in size is the functionality of your wardrobe when you have little ones. Um, so for me, I also wore my kids in baby carriers a ton. They were always, especially my youngest, he just loved being in a baby carrier. Um, and at that point I had a toddler and had started my business. So life was busy and that just worked really well. Um, so I found that shawls were my go-to. They were great for draping around my shoulders while I still had a baby carrier on. They were great if you wanted an impromptu cover for your baby, um, if they're sleeping or you're nursing or anything like that. Like I just loved wearing, that was kind of my go-to outfit was comfy pants, baby and a baby carrier and a shawl. So that was a lot of the knitting I did during that time. I also found that when I had my kids, shawls tended to be a pretty easy pickup and set down knit for me as long as they weren't too complicated. So kind of a bonus there too. Um, you can absolutely knit sweaters during this time. In general though, I do personally prefer to knit sweaters for the size I am right now because you don't know, especially I feel like as a woman, um, our bodies just change so much and that could absolutely be true for everyone, but it's something I've heard from a lot of women is our bodies change a lot. And so if you're always trying to kind of knit for what you think your body's gonna be, I just try to, stick with where I'm at right now and what my current measurements are. So that can obviously be tricky during the having baby years. Um, so I definitely think things with positive ease are smart. If it's anything too fitted, that might feel discouraging when you've put all that effort in, if it doesn't fit perfectly um, as your body changes throughout that time. Also, sometimes we think that the only place we're gonna gain weight is maybe in our belly when we're having kids, and for a lot of us, that's not true. So the dimensions all over can have that effect. Um, also, wanting to be able to wear it long-term. I know, I mean, I have friends who were counting on having larger families, and so they felt comfortable making like maternity garments. 
Um, I didn't do that per se because if I'm putting, especially with knitting, I think for sewing, if I had been sewing at the time, I could have seen doing that. Um, but for me, knitting just takes a long time. So to have enough time to then wear that garment as much as I want to, um, yeah, I would rather wanted to make the clothes that I would wear when not pregnant. So I think cardigans are a fantastic idea. And I also think that shawls were my other go-to. Um, so yeah, that's what I made. I would love to hear if anybody has anything they found maybe really fun or special that they knit during that time. Feel free to share in the comments. All right. I love how anytime I start these videos, all of a sudden my whole body is dehydrated. I'm like, I need lotion and I need my water. Okay. So this is another um, new mom question, but I thought it was so great, especially as we're getting into the new year. I think that this one applies to many of us who feel like there's just not enough time in the day. So this is for somebody asking about it as a new mom, but I was like, oh, I think this applies to everyone. So question is, I'm a new mom. Baby Max was born in November and I'm struggling to find time for knitting as the little one requires constantly, constant attention. I miss knitting so much. It's a big part of who I am. Any tips on finding time? So as I said, I think that a lot of us can feel that way. My kids are older and I it's really easy for me to knit around them um, and to find little pockets of time. But I definitely have to talk myself down from the there's never enough time of the day feeling um, because I do personally, there's just so much I want to do and there's just not enough hours in the day. So sometimes that can kind of like get to me and that's when I try to find little pockets of time like you mentioned. So I will say that when my kids were little, one of the things I did is I always had a simple, small project that I could pick up even just for five minutes while they were distracted or taking a nap or what have you, but that I could easily set down if all of a sudden they needed me, woke up from nap, etc. So those kinds of projects are ones that you're not gonna get lost in my crap or was I in the pattern because I had to hurry up and set this down. So mindless things. Um, one of the things I made for my daughter was a just garter stitch baby blankets, literally garter stitch stripes, um, but with blocks of color. It was actually a very satisfying knit. Um, I, as I mentioned earlier, shawls were great, uh, but those can get kind of big. Um, but hats, mitts, socks, Things that are shawls, especially too, because it's nice when you, if you're doing something that leans more towards garter stitch or repetitive stitch like that, once you get into those longer rows, it can be really nice just to get into that rhythm. And again, it's easier to keep track of where you are. Um, but I like the small projects like socks or a hat because they're easy to carry around. Um, but I really, and to this day, I carry my knitting everywhere I go, even if I'm not going to have a chance to knit on the project, because you just never know when you're going to have a few minutes. So if you're like me, you don't feel like there's enough time in the day, always come prepared. Always have your craft with you if that is an option for you. So embroidery, support spindle or drop spindle spinning, knitting, you know, these little crafts, some kind of stitching that we can carry around with us. It's amazing how like when I'm in the car, I'm lucky that Peter pretty much always drives. <laughs> so even like 15 minutes while we have to head out to go run an errand, I can get a few stitches in. Um, so little moments like that. The other thing that's not necessarily going to be a possibility for everyone, but especially once we had our second child, it became really important for me to have that little bit of time I could count on every week and to fill up because I realized very quickly for me to be the kind of mom I want to be, I do need to have my fill up time too, so that I'm not trying to pour from an empty bucket. So, um, when my kids were really little, every Sunday, I would get a little time where I got to go to my knit group or even by myself, go to a cafe and slowly drink a cup of coffee 
and then even for an hour, even for half an hour, that time really adds up. Um, so if there's anybody in your life you could ask for, ask for that support and say, hey, this is something that I think is pivotal to my joy so I can keep my bucket full for our new little baby. And if I can get some support there, that would mean a lot. So whether that's a loved one, a friend, um, a partner, what have you, a mommy's helper, um, I think it's really worth trying to find that support if you're able to to kind of block in that time. Cause it's interesting too, how I think it helps relieve some of the pressure in our lives or like the stress we put on ourselves when we know we can count on that one thing. So it's like you have control over, even if it's 15 minutes, you know, like right now I'm giving myself 15 minutes to spin on a spindle every day. And this week I've been doing it in the morning with my coffee and it's been just this thing I can look forward to that I know I have control over. <laughs> That's just like my little joy bubble that I get to fill up with in the morning. Um, so I also want to say for the young parents out there, it does get better and you will get more time to yourself again. Um, I know that there is to me nothing truer than the quote, the days are long, but the years are short. I very much am in the stage of like, oh my gosh, my babies aren't babies anymore. Um, so you will end up getting more time to return to your crafts as your kids become more independent. So that's helpful to keep tucked away too. But for all of us out there who are trying to fit in the things that fill us up and having a hard time doing it, keeping it with you, keeping it simple so that you don't have to put too much thought and you know, you don't want to spend all your crafting time, especially if it's only 15 minutes, trying to remember where you were in the craft. Um, maybe also consider different crafts. Obviously, we have a lot of us have our craft that's kind of our ride or die like the one that makes us the happiest that lights us up the most for me that is knitting um sounds like it is for the person who asked this question too but a lot of us who are creative and into a craft of some sort can get that fill up from other crafts too so even now my mind's just racing with all the ideas but like one thing too is to maybe try and schedule a class so even if it's not a knitting class or if it is a knitting class um but sometimes having something on the calendar when you know you have somebody who can watch your kiddo or whatever it is or where you can just allow yourself that time maybe you don't have kids but you have a lot of other responsibilities maybe you're caretaking for somebody but if you can block out and be like, okay, I'm going to take this class on this one Saturday of the month. I mean, you have that to look forward to getting those things on the calendar. You could even put on your weekly, monthly calendar, however you calendar, you know, you could block in that time for yourself every morning of 15 minutes of fill up time. One of the things I was going to show this at the end, but I feel like I'm just going to show it now. Um, one of the things that I'm doing that I'm having so much fun with, um, is we were we have a really adorable local bookshop that we walked to with our kids over a break and we were there to find things for them and i just happened to pick up this book it's called 15 minute art drawing and it's by jessica smith and it was like right before we were leaving and i saw it and i just started peeking through and i love that it's 15 minutes a day and you do these drawings so i'll show you <laughs> you know, a strawberry plant, some citrus fruit, but there's all kinds, like you keep going and there's one every day. And it honestly, I can do it in 15 minutes and I love drawing. It's something that I don't think I'm naturally super talented at. I, I have to work at it. So I love when I can make space for it, but sometimes it falls to the wayside because it's not the top of my priority list. So to take this time, I mean, this is what kind of got me into so I'm like, I could draw for 15 minutes a day uh, and I'm just enjoying it so much. So also fun to just show off something that I know some of you who just love to make in all the realms might be interested in, uh, but I am really, really enjoying it. And I love that I can do it in 15 minutes. Um, so I think there's all different kinds of art forms out there that we can squeeze into smaller amounts of time during the seasons of our life when that time is limited. 
um, and knitting's definitely one of them. When my kids were babies was when knitting is all I did. I didn't really break out into other crafts during that time besides cooking and stuff. Um, but I, I just had it everywhere. All kids are different too. You know, my oldest was a great napper. So while she would nap, I would, that's when I would sneak in some knitting time too. Um, so anyways, if anybody else has any tips on how you like to make space in your life for the things that are important and that fill you up, I would love to hear them below because I think we could all take away from that. And I think it's nice as we're getting into this new year to find ways to bring those little bits of joy that fill our bucket without adding any stress or pressure. Like that's another thing to, um, I'm just going to keep on going on a tangent, but both my husband and I are creative people. And there are times where we have found where we've had to mentally set aside our creativity to focus on our kids because we found it was causing us stress by feeling like we couldn't have the time for the creativity. So it's constantly evolving. It shifts, it changes, and trying to be fluid is helpful too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I feel like now I'm probably not being that helpful. So I hope that you find a few minutes to fit in your knitting and know that it will always be there for you. You know, even if it's not today or this week, it's not going anywhere and it'll be there ready for you as soon as you're ready for it. Okay, let's go on. So I have a question. I think you've talked about another episode, but I can't find it. I have a Chow Gu interchangeable red cable set of knitting needles and quite the collection of cables, which I'd be lost without, but trying to store them all in one place has just turned into a nightmare. Please help. Would you share how you store your needles? So I have two ways that I like to store my needles. One, which I've shown on here many a time is Magpie Fibers Maxwell Utility Roll. So in here, it's this big canvas needle holder. So you can fit your needles in there. I put cables in here, and then I usually zip notions, um, row counters, etc., in this side here. Depending on how much you put in here, you can actually roll this like a little thing. I like to do this book fold. It's about the size of a book because it fits great into my bag without being too bulky. It's really easy to just take everywhere with me. So Maxwell Utility Roll by Magpie Fibers is one of my favorites and I've been using it for years. The other one, which is newer to me, is the Thread and Maple Needle Binder. Whoop! Apparently I had a stitch marker on top of there. I did not realize. So this thing of beauty is leather and in it you buy specific pages for what you want in here and there's all different kinds of pages so the fun thing about this is it's very adaptable to you so they have specific pages for different needle sets i know off the top of my head i'm getting a phone call so I know off the top of my head that they have Chowgu because that's what I have. I also know they have Luca or Likey needles. Um, I'm pretty sure they have Haya Haya. I think they might have Addy. So they have pages for all different kinds of sets. And then they also have pages that are for fixed needles, double pointed needles, project pages, cord pages so what's fun is you can get a binder and there's two different sizes this is the large there's one that's one size smaller and then you pick your pages that you want to put in here and they pop out so you open that strap and you can pop them out so let me share why i really enjoy this is i'm just going to do my first page probably because it's going to be the easiest one for me to get out right now i don't think i have any out Okay, so I know you can't see down here, but 
the fun thing is, is you can remove all the pages. You can remove an ad because you get to pick what pages go in. So what I love, and yes, I have missing needles right now because I'm using them. Uh, but what I love is that all of these are also standalone. So here's my cords. Here is my needles. And the, these are going to be my most used needles. So this is size two through eight. And those are the ones I knit with the most. And then my accompanying cords, which you could put all kinds of things in this little pouch if you want. So I can take that out of the binder. And then it becomes its own little case. So let's say I'm traveling and I wanna carry a whole big thing with me. Now I have just my set of needles. And then I get back home and I can pop it back open and put it back into my binder. Um, and I can decide, again, there's all different kinds of pages so I can choose what I wanna bring with me. So I do love the adaptability of this. So this is the Thread and Maple one. I will say this one is an investment. Um, most people are going to build up their pages over time um, because it is a more costly needle storage system. Um, but it's definitely also kind of that heirloom quality that you would just keep forever. And hopefully we'll all have knitters to pass all of these fun things down to. Okay, um, so that is what I do for my needle storage. All right, and this next question is kind of in the same vein. And now I'm realizing that I meant to bring over my notions pouch and, oh, okay. <laughs> All right, so next question is, um, I wondered if you've ever shared what's in your notions pouch. I've been refreshing my tools as there are some great ones that have come out since I started and have added the Coco Knits row counter on your recommendation. I would love to know what other items you carry in your notions pouch and regu regularly use when knitting. I'm also um, a stationary person and what's in your pencil case videos are common. I think that what's in your notions pouch should be just as popular. So, I am in a bit of a weird reorganization. So I right now have like multiple notion pouches going on. I don't even know where they all are. It's one of those things. It's like, you know, in the new year, you want to start fresh and then you dig in and you're like, I'd rather be knitting. <laughs> so everything's kind of in disarray and not fully um, organized right now. Yeah, I have so many little motion pouches going on. Like I have this one, I have one over there. I'm gonna go grab it quick. So you can listen to me while I go across the room to get this for you. All right, I'm sure you're missing me while I'm gone. Okay, so. This has been my go-to little Notions pouch for ages. I also have their pencil case. Um, what is the name? Oh yeah, Bird and Bell. I love their little felt. They're just so cute. Um, so I got this one as a gift like 10 years ago, I feel like. Um, but this is, I love it because it pops open and it's easy to get into. So inside my Notion pouch, no matter what form it is, whether it's this from Ritual Dyes, cute little round pouch, this guy or this guy, I always, always have at the minimum tapestry needle, scissors, and stitch markers. That's kind of my base. So I actually really love this. I don't know what it's called. Like a little notions. Shoot. It's from Thread and Maple. It's probably like a little notions to go thing. <laughs> uh, but I love it because it has everything I need. Scissors, tapestry needle, and then there's stitch markers in the back here. Um, so I love this little guy because it's literally like all the basics. Um, but sometimes I do carry more. So one of my friends looked in this pouch and was horrified. <laughs> By the disarray so don't judge me okay um this is my little chibi needle holder that i've literally had since i was a teenager 
and it has a very random assortment of tapestry and sewing needles in here. And then I just have pure chaos, really. It is some stitch holders and then just a whole slew <laughs> of stitch markers of all kinds. Um, <laughs> and some bobby pins and some tea pins. So this has been the one that I've had, been carrying around for probably the longest. I also, so again, bare minimum, scissors, tapestry needle, and stitch markers, but I also always carry a, what are these called, measuring tape. Um, so if not, if it doesn't fit in my pouch, then I'm carrying it somewhere on my body. I actually usually have like one to two of these in every single one of my bags. And then what the person asking the question mentioned earlier, this is the Coco Knits Row Counter. Um, which I love because it locks on the bottom. I like to keep track of my rows with a row counter so that, because I don't trust myself. I don't trust my memory. So that's the way to go. Um, okay, so that would be like usually like boop, everything in there. My little pair of snips, which are somewhere on this desk, um, would go like in one of these little pouches. This I did in collaboration with Thread and Maple and the Farmer's Daughter Fibers back in November when we were raising money for Sisters United. We did a really fun collaboration with one of my patterns, some of the Farmer's Daughter Fibers yarn, and Thread and Maple put together this little project page. So this again could go in the needle binder, but it's also a great standalone. And I've been carrying this a lot. I really like how it fits in my bag. I can put, usually I put, let's say I'm working on a sweater. I know I'm going to need a different needle for my ribbing. I might want to use a longer cord for my sleeves compared to my body. So I put any spare needles I might need in here along with this little guy, which holds my stitch markers. Goes in here. There's also a pocket right here, which right now contains a crochet hook. <laughs> And then I have my measuring tape, scissors, tapestry needle, and a pen. So I love that that is just all that's annoying me that it didn't focus. Focus. Come on. It just really always wants to, there we go. Um, so I've actually been carrying this a lot instead of maybe a notions pouch. And I quite like it. That is what really got me even more interested in the needle binder book because I was like, man, these little individual pages are so handy. And I love that I can just like have this little thing with my project. Um, so there you go. That's, that's what I carry. Um, sometimes I'll also, I actually just took it out because it was turning into a tangled mess is my, I often usually have a little bobbin full of embroidery thread and I will use that for lifelines, for waist yarn, to hold stitches, etc. Um, I also usually carry a little thing of barber's cords, which are those cords you can pop onto your needle when you want to like try on a sweater or something. So I usually have that with me too. Um, it doesn't always fit in my pouch, so that might be something I carry separately. Okay. Going. I have a design question. I just like that we're covering all different kinds of bases. All right, even though I'm pretty sure that you're knitting all the time, I have wondered about how you manage to knit enough in your sweater design process. Specifically, after you've decided on the stitch pattern, structure, etc., do you just jump in and knit a full size version of the sweater you've envisioned? Or do you try a mini version to explore the concept pattern in a scaled down version? Um, I knit the full sweater. So usually I do a swatch and then I jump right in pretty quickly. Um, and I knit the sweater that I then will wear. A lot of times you'll notice that a number of my sweaters might have multiple versions where I'm like, ooh, like for the traveler, I did the hoodie and then I was like, oh, but not everyone's gonna want a hood. And so I should do a crew neck too. And so that's when I did the crew neck version. Um, so a lot of times I get inspired during the process to be like, ooh, but what if I did this? But because I never do anything the easy way, <laughs> I 
I of course have to, sorry, I just noticed a stitch marker on the floor. Can't be losing those. Um, so I knit every, the, full, the full thing. <laughs> Um, and often have to tear it out a few times along the way. So I am actually so excited because I'm about to bind off the body for a new sweater pattern. And I mean, I had to start it over, I think three times, um, two to adjust the rate of shaping to get it just where I wanted. And then once, because I realized that the two skeins I had weren't working and I had to do a little undo and redo. Um, but that's very much the process. I'm sure there are very clever knitwear designers out there who map it all out and have it perfect and only have to knit it once, but that is, that is not me. I am such a tactile person that I won't understand it in my brain until I do it with my hands. And that's how I have to figure everything out. Um, so that's just what kind of works for me. But now let's get into a little show and tell. So I already showed you my fun drawing book. That is my new activity so far for this year that I have been enjoying. Um, but also over break, I did a lot of spinning. So it was really nice to take a real break from my work, which generally, I mean, knitting is what fills me up. I very rarely go a day without knitting at least a little bit. But over break, I was like, you know, I just want to be able to focus on this other thing. Um, because knitting generally, even when I'm knitting for pleasure, it's still, I'm still doing it for work in a way where oftentimes I'm so excited about it that of course I want to then share whatever I've made with everybody and it turns into a pattern and whatnot. So I was like, okay, I'm going to take a full break and I'm just going to spin. So I have some yarn to show you. I also finally updated my spinning journal. I highly recommend keeping a journal for your crafts. I can't tell you how many times I have thanked my past self for taking notes, especially when in all the crafts, like when I sew and when you find a pattern that you really love and you end up making it again, it is so wonderful. When past self said, I'm not going to remember all these things I think I'm going to remember. So I should write them down. Um, so I updated my spinning journal. I know I'll get asked. So I do all of my spinning journal and most of my design knitting journal on my iPad these days. The reason I do that is I love that I can now include photos so easily and a lot of what my creative pursuits are visual. So having photos to document it, I used to try and do Polaroids. They are not great for the subtle colors of a skein of yarn or whatnot, or even like sewing like garments like they're just not super crisp um so i have loved doing it on my ipad even though i very much am like a pen and paper person and the app i use is good notes and i just made myself a template and i copy and paste that page again and again with all the information that i find important that i want to document so let's do a little show and tell before we wrap up um, i am very very excited that I have finished my first big spindle spin. So as many of you know, we are doing the 100 days of spindle spinning challenge. And I started off, I did a little sample skein, um, which I've shown you here. These two little, these were just little samples. Um, but then I started a big project and I was doing a combo spin, which I love to do. Basically for this combo spin, I just picked three different colorways of Rolags from Hikari Handmade. And then I spun them on spindles and I stored them all on these little weaving bobbins. So I would spin until my spindle was full and then I would transfer them onto weaving bobbins to store them until I was ready to ply. So I had 18 of these ready for plying, six of each color. And over break, I plied. And y'all, I got over 800 yards of sport weight spindle spun yarn. I did ply on my Hanson because I just knew I don't, I like a normal size skein. I don't want mini skeins that I could ply on my bobbin, on my bobbin, on my drop spindle. So I did go ahead and ply on a wheel and I'm very happy with that. Um, so here we go. I'm so excited and it is so soft and lofty. 
I wish that you could touch it in person. So that got done. I also told you about my three ply, three ways little experiment that I was doing. So I took a braid, I divided it into three. One section of that braid I spun end to end, just normal. The other section I put on my drum carter and I blended it, turning it into a bat where I blended all the colors. And I spun that onto a bobbin. And then my last one, I did gradient roll ags. And then I spun those end to end matching the end color as I went. And this is the final skein. And I love how it turned out. The consistency is great. I was a little nervous with the three different preps. Was it gonna be consistent? Was it gonna be lumpy bumpy all over the place? But I'm really, really happy with the finished yarn. There she is. Um, it was so much fun. I'm already thinking about doing it again. This is Ramboulet. It's an old club color from Nest Fiber from like 2021 called Days of Yore. Um, also kind of appropriate for the holiday season, but I'm so tickled with how that turned out. And then I finally finished my sweater spin. So I started this back in August and then just ran out of steam, which can happen with a sweater spin. Um, but I am so excited to have finished all of this glorious yarn. I already have plans for it. Um, so you'll be seeing more of this. And this one was also a club colorway, but from Hello Yarn and it's called Telling Stories. It was from sometime last year, I think in the spring. Um, so there we go. There are my show and tells. I think that's all we got. I have new patterns coming your way soon. I already have the first three of the year done and dusted. We just need to go take some photos so I can get them out to you. Um, but keep an eye out for those. The best way to catch my new releases is definitely to subscribe to my newsletter. It's also the only place to get a fun little introductory discount on new patterns when they get released. So you can find a link to that below. Um, it's gonna be just below the link to ask a question. So if you have a question you would like to see answered here, please click that link and you can fill out whatever question you would like. And I think that's it. So thank you so much for hanging out with me and I hope to see you back here next week. Happy making.